What's up, tweenerheads? Welcome back to another Tweener Tennis video. Today, we have the number one tennis player in college right now. We have William Blumber, a fellow Connecticut resident and superstar. There's no other way of putting it. We have a superstar college player on our channel today. This guy's hit with Roger Federer, Novak Djokovic, has been ACC Player of the Year, has won a national title, has been literally everything that you can imagine a college player achieving this man has achieved and he started his own podcast as well he has done so much so i'm very excited to have him on the channel and talk about his career what he looks to do after college maybe go pro maybe continue his podcast journey no matter what so i really hope you guys do enjoy this video make sure you leave a big like as well as making sure you subscribe to tweener tennis it's completely free so make sure you go hit that sub button right down below it's right, it's right there so enjoy. Thank you to William for joining the channel again, and I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. So we are back with another video. We are with the William Blumberg. If you do not know this man, you are not watching college tennis because this is probably one of the most accomplished college tennis players out there right now. How are we doing today, William? Yeah, doing well. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. No worries. I'm glad we can finally do this. I think, first off, I have to say congratulations. ITA National Champions once again. How's it feel to win another one? Well, for me, they, they, this is the, um, the second one for the program, but my first one, they, uh, yeah. they won right before I came. Mm -hmm. um, so it was good. Uh, it was awesome, man. I'm so proud of the team, so proud of the guys. Uh, you know, it's been a long time coming, but uh, I was super stoked to be able to, you know, achieve that and, and bring that back to Carolina. Um, so, yeah, I'm just super excited. Was that the ultimate goal for you going into UNC? Because I feel like you have so you've accomplished so much more, not just the ITAs this year, but in the past. If you look up his bio online, it's like a never-ending list of accomplishments. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, individual accolades are awesome, but there's nothing better than you know doing it with the team. So, you know, number one on my goals when I wrote them every single year is national team champion. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a, it's a huge honor to be able to do that and, and be a part of a group that, that did that and brought it back to North Carolina. So, yeah, definitely, definitely my number one goal. Oh, 100%. I think for you, too, I, for UNC, uh, talk us through your decision to go to UNC because I feel like you, you were one of the highest recruited kids out of Connecticut, especially from mm. my knowledge. What was it like to pick UNC over other programs that gave you uh, offers? Yeah. Um, I was fortunate, you know, I had a little bit, you know, more than probably others of freedom of being able to almost decide where, um, and I was, you know, very, very lucky. My, my parents helped me out a lot. I, I, I visited, you know, a bunch of schools. I saw there are many good options. I mean, college tennis is awesome and, and has been really thriving the last, you know, 10 years, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as many more people have been going to college and it's been seen as like an awesome route to the pro tour, especially a lot of, you know, great players have gone. So, you know, I visited USC, Virginia, UNC, um, you know, a bunch of schools. I don't know. And it came down really to Virginia and UNC. Virginia had, I was friends with a bunch of the guys on the team. They were doing awesome. Um, and, you know, in the end, it just, just came down to like a feel of UNC. You know, there's like, if anyone's ever been on campus, there's just like a feel that you have like on campus. And it just felt like home for me. Um, you know, the coaches and, and Trip and Coach Paul and them, it just felt, it felt really, you know, right to me. Um, everyone's different, you know, everyone has their own fit and, you know, I couldn't, couldn't have been more happy of the decision that I made. Um, but it was really between those two schools and, you know, I'm, I feel very lucky that I've, I, I was, had the ability to come here and chose to come here. I, th I think you died. Oh my God, my microphone. <laughs> I think the, I think you definitely made the right choice. I mean, freshman of the year, ITA national rookie of the year, singles runner up, number high in singles and doubles i mean the list goes on and on for you i i mean w what's the plan i think a lot of people would like to know after this successful run that you had at unc would you say that your path going forward is going pro because you have played itfs you have played pro tournaments i don't know if it's too early to ask that question yet for you but i felt like with the amount of work you've done with jack sock and everyone we see that you do have potential to play on the pro tour. Is that the next step for you? Yeah, of course. I mean, 
I've always been like my dream to play and I've always wanted to play and from a young age and watching a bunch of my friends prosper on the tour has been awesome and, and super motivating for me. Um, and I definitely want to play, you know, I think <clears throat> I've talked about it before, but everyone has their own path, right? So some guys might not go to college. Some guys might go to college. Some guys might stay one year. Some guys might stay four or five. So everyone's different, you know, and, and I, I was lucky to be surrounded with people that believed in me no matter what and through it all. And always, you know, stayed believing in me through like difficult times. Um, and so, listen, I, I really want to play on the tour. I'm going to play after this year for sure. hundred percent. Um, I'm thankful to have those people around me that believed in me. And I, I just believe that, you know, you can go to college and still be successful on the tour. You don't have to leave early. You don't have to be, you know, the number one person, you know, you can do, you can do it your way. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, I'm feeling good, healthy, positive. So I'm feeling, you know, excited about that opportunity. What's one thing you think that college offers for you as a tennis player that you're going to miss if you go to, when you go to the pros? Is there something that college may offer that or grants you access to that you might not have access to on the pro tour? I think the ability of just having everything like, well, first of all, there's many, many things, but number one probably is the ability to be at a place in which every, especially like North Carolina, and there are many universities like this, but in which everyone around you is like seeking excellence. Mm -hmm. And you also have all the like opportunities as well as like, I'm blanking on the word, but you have like your gym, your practice, the trainer, nutritionist, everything. You have everything here and it's all free. You don't pay to go, you know, mm -hmm. you might pay depending on your, whatever your scholarship is or whatever, but you might pay for the school, but you don't pay an extra fee to go lift an extra time or yeah. to see the nutrition. So it's all, you know, at your disposal. It's just a matter of how much you want to use it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really catch on to that until kind of middle of my career. I'm like, Hey man, this is unbelievable. You know, like wake up, you know, you got to use yeah. all these facilities. And like, as soon as you turn pro, you start paying for everything. You know, you want to lift an extra time or get an extra training session, you're paying for it. You want to see a nutrition nutritionist, you're paying for it. So it's like, for me, it's been such an unbelievable asset to be able to be here and be in Chapel Hill and have my training whenever I want and all that, you know, I don't need to ramble on about it, but you know no. what I mean? It's such an awesome, you know, such an awesome, uh, you know, thing to have. I, I think a lot of people don't realize that as well, because I think, like you said, everyone has their own paths. When people go pro when they're 16 versus going to college where they might not have the facilities that they did back home. So I think do you, going to college was, I think, a much easier choice for you going forward or for anyone for that matter, right? It makes yeah, your I mean, transition a little easier. Yeah, I mean, you know, you just have to like – I think tennis is, is a very interesting sport because it's very individualized and, mm -hmm. and you can make it as much so. So like what, what might be best for me might not be best for the next up and coming kid. You know what I mean? So like yeah. it was great for me. I wasn't, you know, mentally ready. I wasn't physically ready. So it's just something I needed. You know, I would suggest that all players, you know, go to college. I mean, that's in my opinion, unless you're like, I don't know, 16, 17, and like absolutely killing it. Like what is, you know, even if you go for a semester, have the ability to go back and get your education. It's such like just an awesome asset to have in your life. And, and, you know, I want everyone that goes pro, you know, without going to college to succeed, but not everyone's going to. So mm -hmm. it's an awesome, you know, thing to have in your back pocket. I think another thing you have in your back pocket that a lot of people don't have at your age is a very successful podcast, The Journey of Success with Will Blumberg. I think you've had the Bryan brothers, you've had UNC basketball players, you've had musicians, you, you've literally had everyone possible. What's, the, what's that been like starting that and why did you start it? Yeah, it's been really fun. And I just like, I was over quarantine. Um, I was at, um, I was quarantining at my girlfriend's house and her and her family. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I really like having like, you know, discussions with people that I can learn so much from. Mm -hmm. um, and really anyone, you know, you can learn from anyone and, and their, you know, journey, whatever, whatever they've been on. So I just said, you know what, I'm going to start it, you know, it'll probably be weird for me. I'll feel awkward. You know, sometimes you probably know it's weird. You know, you, there's like some awkward moments and you don't know mm -hmm. what to say, but I was just like, you know, why not? I'll use, I'll use my resources. And, and I have some, fortunately I've made some, some awesome friends and connections and I reached out to them and they were, you know, nice enough to help and, and come on. So I've learned a lot. I've been super lazy with it. It's harder than you think to continue to, 
you know, like 100%. pump it out. I had an awesome, awesome, awesome guy and basically partner who helped me uh, edit, you know, everything. He did a, a lot of it for me. So he's a, you know, a hidden hero, but it's been, it was hard. It's just hard to like pump them out every week. And especially during the season, I've been busy, but mm-hmm. I really want to get back on it, but it's just been fun. It's, you know, something to take your mind off everything that you've been doing, but it's been awesome. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people like to do is have that passion off the court that you can take with you. And as a student athlete like yourself, it's hard to find that divide. And I feel like it's really hard to have that kind of off the court passion that some people struggle to have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's cool. I mean, like I said, everyone's, you know, you have to be an individual, right? You you got to be different than everyone else. What I mm-hmm. like is not going to be what you're, you know what I mean? So mm-hmm um it's cool it's it's awesome it's something i probably never thought i would be doing but Mm -hmm. it's uh you know it's been it's been such you know joy and 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 been very fun to do and i've learned so much and still learning so much so it's been awesome in terms of tennis players you've interviewed the likes of mike and bob bryan legends jack sock the craziest forehand that you'll ever see paul jubb a rising star in the uk played for south carolina won a singles national title Besides the tennis players, which interview do you think that you can remember stood out to you the most? That's a good question. We also had Stefano Sissipas on. That's there, right. Excuse me. I just saw him on club. I just saw him on Clubhouse today too. So I'm kind of pissed that I forgot that. Fuck. Uh, um, yeah, but I don't know. There's that's a good question. I've had a bunch. I mean, there's really not one you can like separate. One of my favorite ones I did with one of my, my friend named Christina, uh, who works in New York City, um, who is just an absolute animal. And she's dealt with so much adversity uh, and just the ability to, to kind of push through that and, and learn and, and struggle, but then prosper in the end. And, and, and she has such a positive message to share. To share. It was just something that, um, you know, was different and just really an awesome, awesome that she felt comfortable sharing sharing her story on, on the platform that I had, whatever, as small as it is or whatever, as whoever wanted to listen. Um, but it was just an awesome, a really, really cool thing. Um, and I was thankful that she came on. What was the, what was the goal kind of behind it? Because I feel like you, you're getting all this information from different areas and different jobs and different uh, pro athlete visions. How, what would be your ultimate goal to do with this? Or do you have kind of an end goal for this you know it's tough like I would say my ultimate goal when I originally started is just to learn I have so much to learn uh there's so many amazing people in the world not just pro athletes it's not it's it's anybody you know anyone walking like everybody has a message to share and so for me I was interested in people that have succeeded in their platforms i didn't care if it's sports music whatever it is i just want to learn and and see you know what do you have that i don't have or what what can Mm -hmm. i continue to push what can i what can i get better at what can i learn from you you know what what what, and you never know right like you know bob and mike come on and and some guy listens and it and it helps him great that's like a win for me right i'm Mm -hmm. like i'm not getting paid to do it i just do it myself it's because i enjoy it right so it's like how much can I learn and, and how can I better myself by having these people on and them sharing their stories and just learn, you know, like you're far, I'm, I, I'm far from perfect. So it's like, how can I just continue to, to get better each day and, and continue to inspire myself really and, and, and hopefully others as well. So it, who would be your biggest inspiration, not just for tennis, but in life, because you have, you have so many people in your life, it seems like that have already achieved so much success and you're thriving off it, being at UNC, playing number one, who would you say was the biggest influencer or inspiration for you? I mean, it's corny and sappy, but for sure, my parents, man. I mean, I know it's different. It's not corny. It's not corny at all. You know, you just like, I don't know. My parents are super, super strong and, and just amazing. And and what they've gone through and, and, mm. you know, they've been so amazing to me. I'm not, I'm would be nothing without them. Absolutely nothing. So mm-hmm. it's just different. You go through many highs and lows in life. Everyone knows what it's about, you know, times where you don't want to play. There are times when I was like, I want to stop playing tennis. And it's just like the people that believe in you, like truly like through and through at those times. So my parents, man, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am without them. So, um, 
they're definitely my inspiration. They keep pushing me today. They keep, you know, not only just being a, you know, good tennis player, but it's really important to them for me to be a good person. So um, I think it's important to keep, you know, your life in check, but um, for sure them, I've been fortunate to meet, you know, many people and spend awesome times and those people drive me as well, but none more than my family and my parents. I think, I think a lot of people don't really realize how much your parents sacrifice for you to play tennis, whether it's driving you to a tournament, watching you play, calling coaches, scheduling practices. A lot, a lot of people stick with their parents as their coaches, which is great. But at the beginning, when everything first starts, it's the amount of sacrifice that they have for you. And I think that really stands out to certain people when it comes to starting to play or uh, inspired to play, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't even explain to you. And looking back, you kind of take it for granted, right? Because you don't mm -hmm. know any better. Like, 100%. When you're like 12, 14, you don't know. Like, you're just like, oh, mm -hmm. mom's driving me today. You know, or dad's taking me to this tournament. It's like, well, you know, why don't That's you normal. try and do that? Like, if I think about doing that now, I'm like, oh, my parents are going to go. Like, they, my dad grinds all week, right, at work. And he's going to drive Friday night for my match at nine and then stay in a hotel like two hours away. You know, like yeah. that sucks. The idea of that yeah. sucks, but they just do it with such like a positive attitude. My mom drove me every day. I practiced 45 days, 45 uh, minutes away from home. Right. So she's driving yeah. me there, back there and back. So it's like, just like little things like that. You don't, you don't realize until you get older and it's just mm -hmm. like the sacrifice, but you know, for them, it's a large sacrifice, but I was fortunate. It's just like, we were a really close family. So, you know, they don't, they don't, they never complained about it. They always just wanted you to be happy. And, and so that's why it's like, looking back, it's, you're nothing without them. Right. I mean, like I'm absolutely nothing. I'd be, you know, who knows? So I'm just, I'm just very thankful of that about that. I, I like that theme of sacrifice. And for me, my next question for you would be, what was the biggest sacrifice before going to college? Because I think a lot of people don't understand what it takes to be a division one player at such a high level how much sacrifice did you have growing up when it came to having a social life, having friends, having kind of that normal experience that people would say before going to college? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I left school in eighth grade, right? Yeah. Uh, so I didn't go to high school until I went back for like six months really. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I didn't have the high school life. Uh, I didn't have, you know, I wasn't going to parties on Fridays. I wasn't, you know, like mm -hmm. I didn't do that. So it wasn't like, you know, it's funny. Like I'm at like a somewhat reflective stage in my life, like as much as I can be just because I'm mm. exiting college soon and whatever. And it's funny. Like if you asked me like two years ago, I'd say, man, I sacrifice so much. And you do, right. You mm -hmm. sacrifice like a ton in your life, but like it's worth it. You know, like, yeah. I don't know, like, as I've gotten older and especially we just won the national championship, like when we won, like it was crazy. I was like seeing like flashes of so much stuff. Like mm -hmm. I just couldn't even sprint on the court. I was just like, I started crying. It's just mm -hmm. like you do sacrifice so much, right? You like, I don't like, I don't even go out, you know, now, like I don't, I just, I'm, I'm committed to what I want to do. And like, yeah, like that's a sacrifice, but it's who I am, right? At the end of the day, it's kind of who you are as a person and what you want to do and what you want to like achieve, right? So it's nothing against somebody that wants to go out. It's nothing against, like, of course, I've had great times going out, right? But it's it's mm. just like, at the end of the day, like, what do you want to do, you know? And for me, it's like, I want to achieve like the highest, highest level of things. And to do that, um, you can't be like everyone else. You know, you can't just like, go out every you have to it's just part of the journey right so like i've been fortunate enough to 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 be around guys like bob ryan there's a guy in the wall right there justin yeah. williams who i've been fortunate enough um you know to get to know really well and those guys like it's just part of who you are right you, you don't accept anything less than the best you don't accept being second you don't like and no matter what you do so that's a long ramble but it's just kind of built like part of it is just like built in your blood and your dna of who you are you don't accept you know, less than the best. And part of that is sacrificing. So it's just part of, part of kind of who I am. And, and yeah, you do sacrifice a lot, but fortunately for me, I've had success. And so it, it all has, you know, done, you know, 360 and been worth it. I think that's a great way of putting it for you because, and I think a lot of people can relate to that idea of trying to figure out and trying to see what they have to do to make it to the next level. And a lot of people don't understand what it takes. 
But I think another value that you could probably relate to is just staying patient, being patient with yourself, being patient with your process, because in the end, it has to work. You don't have to rush anything necessarily. You, you have to take your time with the strengths that you have to figure out, okay, this is what I have to do next. This is what's going to lead me to that national championship, that job promotion, that whatever next step that you need to take in life. So I think that's a really interesting way to put it. Yeah. Have you ever, have you ever heard of this guy, Inky Johnson? You know it sound, it sure. sounds familiar, but he's no, a, I can't say. A motivational speaker. Um, mm -hmm. And he's, he like discusses things and I, I listen to him like a lot. There's like a really cool thing he says and, and I'm probably going to botch it, but uh, the people can look it up, but it's like, you want to stay committed to what you like, you want to stay committed to what you said you would commit to long after the mood you set it in dissipates. So like, it's a, it's a cool thing. Like, I don't know, just like, you want to be a king of the like, showing up on time, you know, giving effort, like everything you can control, you have to control. Like people ask me like, you know, what, 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 you know, like guys going into freshman year of college, like, Oh, like, what should we do? You know, or what, what helps success? It's like, of course you can, you, you can't control like whether the coach is going to put, you can't, right. You have to control everything that you can control. Right. So you're showing up on time. You're being prepared work ethic. Like, it's just never, for me, it's never an option to quit. It's never an option to like surrender in a match. It's never not like, that's just not an option, right? If you want to be the best, it's just not an option. Uh, so things like that are, are, are things that I think are like, just the most important. I think, yeah, and looking at Inky Johnson described as the survival of an underprivileged past, which is actually a great way of just understanding like this is where you come from this is what you need to do next to survive and to do well and i think i i rarely ask this amongst guests on the channel and for me i think i can ask you this is do you see yourself as a role model for others that's a good question i'm i don't know how i would answer that i would say i i live my life to try to be right so it's mm -hmm. like somebody wants to to follow that path and of course it would, it's like would be the biggest honor to to be a role model for someone else right but you just try and do things right right honestly at the end of the day you try and like just live your life to make you know people proud you want to do the right things you want to you want to say the right things you want to act properly you want to at the end of the day that's all you have right is is basically like when you look in the mirror like what do you want to see you know so it's mm -hmm. like i try and just do that right and you're not perfect like if you look at my freshman year self and like whatever you know absolutely not perfect not fr not even close to it uh still not even close to it but you know you learn from your mistakes you learn from your past and you just continue to grow and that's really all you can do you know so um that's that's how i would answer it the best i think i think i was about to ask if you believed in perfection and i think that kind of you touched on it a little bit, like no one's perfect there. The, I don't, in my personal opinion, there's no such thing as uh, perfection when it comes to being an athlete or being a person, no one's perfect. Everyone makes mistakes. So I think for you, how would you define your own kind of idea of perfection? Because there, it, I see, yeah, it I seems like, you like, know, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I, I just feel like it's one of those like unattainable goals, mm -hmm. but that is like, seems like it's within reach but you just like whenever you get close to it it's just keeps moving right it's like have you ever seen them like i don't know i watch a lot of videos like on youtube and stuff but yeah. matthew mcconaughey gave a speech when he won the oscar and he was like yeah. my role model is myself in 10 years right it's because you'll yeah. never get there you'll never be like you can never be perfect right but you can always continue to strive to be close mm. um and there are people like you know i'm sure federer and those guys are as close to perfect as you can be mm -hmm. right i mean so it's like, but nobody is exactly perfect. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone. So, you know, you probably wouldn't be human if you're perfect, but it's kind of the unattainable goal that keeps pushing people to, to be perfect. And you want to strive for perfection, but you'll never get there. But so have you, so have you played like a perfect match? What would be qualified as that in tennis? Yeah. I mean, you just, I mean, <laughs> I'm sure sometimes you feel like you have, right. I mean, mm -hmm. but even then, like, you know, you, I've won some matches six oh six oh and been like could have been better, right? I mean, like yeah. 
slow could it, the score sometimes never like you know tells the full story right in golf they say there's no pictures on a scorecard so like mm -hmm. there's just i don't know like uh, you, if you put it in like sectors right you'll play they say you play like in a year maybe like three times where everything is like absolutely perfect for you you feel like great you know the rest you might feel like average and then you just figure it out right it's like my oh, guys like I don't know, the guys that are tough as nails are always the best. So, like, I don't know. I would say you play, like, a couple times where you feel like, man, that was as close to as perfect as I can get. Mm -hmm. I, I, that It's true because I think – and I was recently taught that as well uh, in terms of playing, like, the perfect match. You'll probably, in a season, probably play it once or twice for an entire season when it comes yeah. to understanding, like, how good and how well you can play. Like, perfection doesn't really exist. So, yeah. I think for the last, I think the last question I have to ask you uh, for tennis wise is who, what was your toughest match and who was the most famous you've hit with? Because I know you hit with the Bryan brothers. I know you've hit with Jack Sock. I want to know who, who else you can keep up with <laughs> to say the least. My toughest match in, in, in college or college. Let's go college. That's a good question, man. I've had some battles. I've been on the the losing end of some battles. I've been on the winning end of some battles. I played, you know, I mean, born at Gojo, we had some absolute battles. Carl Soderlund, I've had some battles with, like, mm -hmm. three hours. So, you know, those guys, you know, you get into it, but it always it always makes you better. It always pushes you. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's why we play. You know, you yeah. don't play for the fun, you know, prance in the park. You play to get you know, down, you played it, you know, that's, this is why you play college tennis. So hundred percent, um, probably some of those guys, I don't know. I've played, I played Ty and some tight ones. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Something like that. And yeah, I've been fortunate. I trained with Federer and for a week and I trained Jesus. with Djokovic before. So those are, those are, uh, probably <laughs> which one, as good as it gets. Which one was harder? You can be honest. I, I mean, I, yeah, it, it's they're just so different. Like I would say, Federer hit the ball like the heaviest of anyone I've ever hit with in my life. Wow, really? Uh, it's really shocking for me because it doesn't look like that. But mm -hmm. they all train hard, man. I trained with them also. I trained with Federer in like an off week, like a training week. Yeah. Um. So that was tough, but it was that was fun though. It was like awesome. I trained with Djokovic at the Open like probably ten times. Um, Jesus. And in like the off days, we go up in New Jersey and stuff. So like they're both tough um in their own ways obviously they've you know Djokovic, Djokovic 18 grand slams that are 20 yeah. so you know you really can't you compete 1 percent of their career you'd, you know I'd be ecstatic you'd still you'd still win 10 million dollars and you'd still win like five <laughs> titles like that's that's a great that's a great career right there yeah. well well I really appreciate you coming on um Make sure to check out his podcast, The Journey. Make sure to check him out on Instagram and Twitter. This guy is the real deal, not just on the court, but off the court as well. So thank you again for joining me for this. Appreciate it. Sorry it took me so long. <laughs> no worries. I'm glad we finally did it. Take care, guys. Perfect. Bye. Bye.